It's creepy. And, and then the question comes to, you know, when we talk about sort of like, the, you know, the, well, there's two things. I mean, one, um, I mean, it, it, it seems to me that there's, there's, there's two ways that you can approach this in terms of why it's wrong. One is there's, you know, sort of some notion of rule of law. Right. I mean, presumably, if the uh, these banks, even though they don't seem to have any civil liability, according to um, uh, this judge in the Southern District of New York, um, they did settle with the Justice Department and albeit for, you know, uh, the cost of uh, new ink and their copiers, essentially. Uh, right. But 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 there must have been some. I mean, there must be some grounds, some legal, um, uh, some legal issue here. Um, so it's 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 just breaking the law on some level for them to be lying sure. about this stuff. The other thing is that, like, it, I mean, it seems to me that there is now this sort of attitude that everybody has to buy into. So that they don't freak out that, like, look, most of this stuff is just a black box. And it really doesn't matter what comes out the other side. If they're skimming or lying and they're doing it 10 or 15% of the time, that's what they're doing. You know, I, I, my, my dad um, had a parking lot in Worcester. And he would always say to me, like, I know the guy's taking 10%, you know, the guy's working there, but whatever, you know, I know he's taking 10. If he takes more, then I start to worry, but he's only taking 10. So, you know, I get, I get, right. at least it's consistent. It, it, that seems to be the theory that, um, that, that people are operating on. It's like, yeah, it's rigged, but they seem to basically maintain the rigging in a very consistent and polite manner. Yeah, no, uh, that, that's, that's exactly the rationale that everybody, um, that, that in, in fact, when I, when I covered another one of these rigging scandals last year, which involved the rigging of municipal bond service auctions, which is like an incredibly boring thing, but yeah, it, uh, the lawyers for the defense in that case, their, their essential argument was, we're the experts. When, when you call a plumber uh, to come to your house, and to do a job on your house, and he gives you a bill uh, for how much it costs, you don't know uh, how much that job was really worth. You have to rely on him to tell you what the, what the cost was. Um, and so, therefore, if we tell you that the cost of this is X, then that's what the cost is, because we're the experts. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the argument with all this stuff. It's like, well, you know, if gold is X price, um, you don't know any better. We do. Uh, and so... Uh, or if interest rates are this price, well, that that's what it is, and just live with it. I mean, that's that's kind of the um, that's kind of the mentality. And it, again, it's it's a subtle, hard thing to explain to people, but um, it's it's really it, it's incredibly um, uh, galling that they that they come up with this attitude, and they really do believe it uh, that that that's the case. Well, it's interesting because what it really does in many respects is, I mean, look, you know, what is the price of gold? Well, uh, you know, it's worth whatever people are willing to pay for it. And right. what we're seeing in this instance is just like, well, it's worth whatever people are paying for it, but it's really not worth that. It's worth what everybody assumes other people or are claiming to pay for it at that point. Right. And right. it's it's basically uh, the the one thing that you know I walk away from this is that it puts complete lie to the fallacy of of a, of a true market in any context because this is not this is not in any way uh, you know I guess it's well people will pay what they will pay for it yes and maybe they'll pay more if they're told that other people whether it's true or not are paying more for it uh, you know. Uh, Oh, next door, whatever, you know? I mean, it's... Right, no, no. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Look, I, the example I always used to like to use is I, when I lived in, in Moscow uh, and, I, and I wanted to go buy a watermelon on the street, uh, if I went out anywhere in the city on any given day and went to go buy a watermelon, it would be the same price every, everywhere in the city because all the different mafia groups got together every morning and they decided what the price of watermelon was going to be that day. Now... Would I pay that price? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but if it was a real free market, if everybody was, if there were people who were allowed to sell it for less, could I have gotten that watermelon for less? Yeah. 
<laughs> but but it's not. So in, in one sense, yes, the price is what people is what the market will bear because I'm going to pay that that cost. Um, but on the other sense, it's not a real free market because the prices could have been lower, and that's that's kind of the same situation. It's an oversimplified look at this. Uh, but if you're getting together and you're colluding so that everybody is reporting a certain price, uh, then then we're not seeing the real price. <laughs> I mean, so, this is. I mean, the the the. the you know the i guess another sort of takeaway from this is that we're just dealing with a huge cartel and and and, and right. there just seems to be massive antitrust issues here that we will never ever get to and this takes us to you know the collateral consequences uh, you noted in your piece that Lanny Brewer um went back i think to Covington uh, whatever his uh, white Covington Burling yeah yeah which is where he uh, from whence he came as did uh, Holder uh, working on these cases, <laughs> on the other side of these cases, although I'm not convinced he was working on a different side when he was at the Department of Justice. But uh, okay. this no, this concept of collateral consequences, and it's basically just it, which well, just to outline that for us, because I mean we've seen it in the context of the whole mortgage fraud, and it really just seems to cut across everything. Yeah, no, it was intended to cut across everything. It's it's funny this this whole idea dates back re- a really long time. Uh, Eric Holder actually wrote a memo about this back when he was in the Clinton White House in the Justice Department, uh, and it was just sort of a position paper, and it, it's known now as the, the quote unquote Holder memo. Uh, and it, the the whole idea was, what do we do when we want? We have a a, a big company that employs a lot of people. Um, that gets itself into trouble. Uh, we, you know, if, if if we are worried about innocent people losing their jobs, if we charge the company criminally, do we have other options? Uh, and his answer was, yes, we do. We can do other things. We can charge. We can fine them. Uh, we can uh, pursue deferred prosecution agreements. We can do things beyond just charging them criminally. And it didn't catch on right away. It, it, it really caught on after the Arthur Anderson uh, debacle when they were going to charge that company criminally and, and it went up in smoke and 28,000 jobs were lost. And from that point forward, the Justice Department was really shy about charging companies criminally, and not just companies, but individuals at companies, uh, because of this supposed rationale that there are there is collateral damage if we do it, that innocent people are going to suffer, meaning people who have jobs at these companies, um, which makes a little bit of sense, but, but not completely. Uh, you can see why they wouldn't charge a company criminally, but why not individuals? Why not these traders who are, who are monkeying with world rates for a sushi? Uh, it, that's not going to have collateral consequences. Well, so they've started to conflate things, I think is what's happening. Yeah, and you know, if um, if you uh, if you mug somebody on the street and you go to jail, uh, your family's going to suffer. But we don't yeah. we don't we don't see that that concept of collateral consequences in any other field other than uh, those that protect sort of these corporate uh, corporate entities. I mean, it's also. I think what we're seeing now is sort of the implications of, of that, that, that collateral consequences doctrine in terms of uh, preventing people from sort of reengaging in these, uh, these acts. I mean, you know, uh, I had David Day on the other day. I mean, mortgage, com- mortgage companies are doing the exact same thing that they just settled uh, with the government for doing, uh, presumably. Right. And they're not, they're, they're just, we're seeing the banks do the same type of mortgage fraud. Um, and there's, there seems to be, I mean, we talk about moral hazard. This is just, it's crazy. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. No. And, and, and it, again, you're right. And it's not just, uh, it's not just, um, the financial industry, but last year they, there were, there were three massive, uh, settlements in the big pharma industry, uh, for a variety of misdeeds. Uh, one was Gla- GlaxoSmithKline, then there was Abbott, um, and there was a third one. I can't remember which one it was, but they um, they all they all settled for huge amounts of money, and and there were no criminal penalties. 
Uh, and this, this is like the new template for how we deal with, with big politically influential um, uh, corporate wrongdoers. Uh, and the problem is that it, 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 the problem doesn't happen in the first time uh, when they get caught. It, it, the real problem comes out, as you said, in the second time when they, when they violate it again. Well, what do you do? Uh, you you can't just you can't just do it again <laughs> because you can't have an because uh, it's supposed to be, the whole idea is that these this first non criminal action is supposed to be like a warning but they're not they're not taking that next step uh, and so it's becoming a sort of institutionalized cost of doing business uh, thing where everybody knows that nobody goes to jail and and so there's no disincentive to, to wrongdoing at all.